You can be at no loss to understand the reason for my journey, Miss Bennet. I've got my tea. Got my tea, got my wits about me, I think. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. <laughs> uh, my name is Ben, and uh, today we are doing something a bit special. Uh, I'm going to talk about Jane Austen! So here we are, here's all six of her finished novels. Um, so yes, last night, I, I, uh, last night I finished Sense and Sensibility, and that uh, was the last, my last Jane Austen novel to finish. Uh, I have now read all six of these uh, for the first time. Today I thought I would do my own ranking of the novels, because no one asked me and because it's not needed, so why not? So yes, today I'm going to rank the novels based on my preference, based on how I enjoyed them on my initial read. Uh, so it, it sort of goes without saying that um, I am not an expert <laughs> of any description. Um, I'm literally just a Jane Austen noob, and this is kind of my Look at my hair, oh, flip neck. But this is my ranking based on my initial read. So there are lots of you who have read these since you were, I don't know, 12 or something. And you're going to have a much, obviously, you're going to have a much more well-informed um, opinion about which are your favourites. Um, but this is just mine. So here we go, I guess. I will just um, uh, talk about these editions because I think they're nice. They're the Penguin English Library editions, with the very aesthetically pleasing covers. Um, yeah, so they've got the nice spines um, and the sort of simple designs. Some of them make more sense than others. Um, so Mansfield Park, that's got the chain. I, that's understandable. Uh, Northanger Abbey has the Gothic keys, which again is understandable. Uh, Emma has some chairs. I mean, I'm sure that they sit in chairs at some point in the novel. And then the other three are just kind of random feathers and swans and stuff. Um, so yes, they're not very sturdy. They're not very sturdy. Um, I can imagine that these aren't going to last the rest of time. Um, but for now, in the next sort of few years, they'll do. And, and I like, it's as, as I say, they're quite sort of aesthetically pleasing, so they're nice to have on a shelf. And I like that I've got my little Jane Austen collection and I can, you know, pick up and just read a Jane Austen whenever I want now, which is fabulous. So yes, we're going to go from six to one, my least favourite to favourite. Another thing that goes without saying is that um, my least favourite is not like the worst. This is, I, I hated it. No, it's not what it is. Um, it's just least favourite. I enjoyed the others more than I enjoyed that one. You don't need disclaimers. We're all adults, aren't we? No, no, it's, it's the internet. So, number six. So at number six, this might not be too much of a surprise. Northanger Abbey, Abbey, Abbey. From what I understand, this is the first book that she finished and that she kind of sent to publishers. However, it's um, it was one of the last books that she actually that was actually published. It was published posthumously, um, alongside with Persuasion. Now, uh, the reason that this is at number six is because this kind of, um, it does feel to me like an early, an early work. It feels like Jane Austen um, kind of coming, getting to grips with the ideas that she would kind of ultimately really do very, very well in. So, yeah, you've got uh, Catherine Morland, Morland, who's the protagonist, and she's very kind of naive and she's sort of being introduced to society for the first time kind of properly. I do, the first half of the book I think is the better half. Um, it's just really, really funny. There's a really funny bit where she, um, she, <laughs> she's, she arranges to kind of go for a walk with um, the Tilneys, who are this brother and sister, and she's got, you know, Henry Tilney is the love interest. And so she's like, oh, I'm going to go for a walk with them, it's going to be very, very nice. And it starts raining, and so they don't sort of, they don't come to pick her up. And so she's like, are they going to come or are they not? And then John Thorpe, who is sort of the antagonist, um, he's just this very obnoxious man who wants to marry her because he thinks that she's really wealthy. But he's like, come on, it's fine. We're going to go for a jolly good ride in my carriage. And uh, and she's like, no, but the Tildes, they might call. And he's like, no, they won't. They're off there somewhere else. And she's like, oh, OK. But then she, um, they're in the carriage. 
and she sees uh, the Tilneys on the street, and the Tilneys are like, and Catherine Morton's like, no. The second half of the book is the kind of gothic novel parody bit, and um, yeah, I just for some reason, I mean, it was it was fine, but I just wasn't too interested. I um, having since read, I read this uh, at Christmas, around Christmas, and and I was like. Mm, Okay, it's not my favourite, Jane Austen, but I've seen a few videos and things of people talking about this book, and there are a few people who I respect on Booktube who say that this is one of their favourites, so I think I may have slept on Northanger Abbey Abbey Abbey, so uh, I think this is, um, I'm going to prioritise this one um, to read next, I think, to read, you know, to reread. You know, because I think I did sleep on it, and maybe I don't know. Maybe I missed, I missed things about it. But yes, number six, Northanger Abbey, Abbey, Abbey. Oi, oi, oi. Okay, number five. What was that? Sorry, number five. Okay, that, there we go. Uh, so number five is. I'm really sorry. It's uh, maybe I'm in love by Emma Bunton. Watch that video again. Watch Maybe by Emma Bunton, the music video. It's... you need to revisit that video. Okay, so Emma, or as my mum likes to call it, Stupid Girl by Jane Austen. So this was, um, this is the second book I read, and uh, I think it's the longest. I think it is the longest. Um, it comes in... oh! I thought it was longer than that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, it's about, it's just under 500 pages, basically. Um, but yes, here we have uh, Emma Woodhouse, clever, rich, and handsome. Or clever, is that the right order? Clever, handsome, clever, and rich. Uh, Emma Woodhouse. And uh, of course it tells the story of her trying to matchmake. Well, she, ha she has one successful matchmaking um, attempt. And she's like, oh, I'm great at this. And so she decides to, uh, to do it again. Um, and so she decides to matchmake poor Harriet with, um, what's his name? The vicar. Yeah, she tries to set them up, but it all goes terribly, terribly wrong. So I think I, I did enjoy the story, and I think there were bits where I was like, oh, this is funny. This is actually funny. I'm, I'm actually laughing at this. Because <laughs> I hadn't read a Jane Austen novel before. I, the book I'd read before this was Persuasion, and that's not really kind of, you know, laugh out loud. <laughs> Persuasion! No, uh, but Emma is, is. I mean, there's some really funny characters. Um, there's some good old plot twists. I was kind of, um, I was surprised by the plot, plot twists. Yes, but the reason, I think the only reason that it's kind of at number five and not number three or something is just because I, on, a, on my initial read, I enjoyed the others more. Why have they got chairs here? I think it would be much more uh, apt for them to have like a piano or something, because that's, the whole thing of the book is um, who bought the piano forte, so. But I don't know, were chairs a big feature? I don't know. But yes, I didn't find um, I didn't find her too annoying. I think a lot of people think that she's like, oh, she's really annoying. But um, I didn't find that at all. Um, I thought the book was funny, um, and I was surprised with the plot twists, sort of. Uh, and yes, um, I will be eager to read the reread this. Um, it's not it's not on my it's not prioritized to reread this. I think realistically, I'm going to be rereading this next year. Um, but yes, Emma, number five. I'm sorry if it is your favourite. I know it is for a lot of people. But, you know, what can you do? Number four! Number four, I think, I think is, uh, you know it makes sense and sensibility. Um, so yeah, I literally just finished, I literally just finished this uh, last night. And I really, really enjoyed it. I, I think I really like the story. I think I really like the story. Um, it is one, it's a story that I've known before, because I um, I do know the film with Emma Thompson and everything, and I, I, I recently re-watched that, well, kind of um, about three or four months ago I re-watched I re it, and uh, yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, and reading the book, uh, again, I really, really liked it. The language is interesting with this one, um, particularly at the beginning, I mean, once you sort of get into the bulk of it, then it's sort of easy enough to read, but there are bits of it, particularly at the beginning, which seem very formal and much more kind of um, difficult for me <laughs> to get my head, to get my head around. I was like, what are you talking about? Okay, I think I get, I think I get it. But yes, this is about Eleanor and Marianne Dashwood and uh, 
Eleanor being the sense the sensible one and she kind of thinks about everything logically and she's very reserved. And then Marianne who's like, I will go off and recite poetry and everyone has to uh, I believe in soulmates and everything. And the book is basically about how those two characteristics um the kind of the the those two characteristics get tested and um uh, towards the end they have to sort of level each other out. So I was surprised by a couple because I knew the film. Um I was surprised by a couple of things. I was surprised that Colonel Brandon is actually meant to be 35 and not 50 or however old Alan Rickman was. I mean the age the casting in that film is a bit bonkers. Um Emma Thompson I think she was 34 or 5 when she made that film and I think Ellen is meant to be 19 or something or maybe I think she's meant to be 19 or 20. Um so yeah, so with the film, that's the only thing about the film that I'm not really keen on because you know what's a 55 year old doing with a 17 year old. Um and the book, I mean yes, what's a 35 year old doing with a 17 year old? I mean Alan Rickman, to be fair to him, he does kind of he does char he does act, that's the verb. He does act the uh, the part of Colonel Brand very well. But um yeah, it just makes me go, oh, I don't like don't really like that. However, it didn't it's not too much I didn't find it too much of an issue issue in the in the novel. I uh yeah, I, I just I really liked it. Mrs. Jennings and uh Fanny Dashwood. Jane Austen, she's very good at a lot of things, and one of the things that I really like her for is her is these characters that she creates, the kind of um the Fanny Dashwoods, the Caroline Bingleys. Isabella Thorpe, the sort of very, very sort of snobby, um, you know, sort of not very self-aware, um, bit nasty, those sort of characters. I think she's really good at them because they're really, really funny. Um, and Fanny Dashwood, there's a really funny bit at the beginning where she's like, um, she's she's basically like, well, they make it live on nothing a year. It's fine. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, but yes, the end, I'm like, mm, with the end, because... Uh, some people really love Colonel Brandon. I've seen a video where someone's like, "Oh, Colonel Brandon," and I'm like, "Well, yeah. I mean, he's very, he's nice and everything." Um, Willoughby, I was surprised. I was really surprised with Jane Austen with her description and sort of characterization of Willoughby because he's kind of the most um, out of all her male characters. For me, he seemed to be the most kind of like sort of heat off the chest type, kind of like Willoughby. Yeah, and I'm sort of surprised by that. Um, but yes, at number four is Sense and Sensibility, I think. If it's not, then at number three... We're, we're already at number three, this is crazy. Number three, I think, is uh, Persuasion. This was the first book. It's been a long... It's been 18 months since I read Persuasion. So I need to kind of... My... um. So yeah, I, I, I think this is number three. So this was the last book that she finished... And along with Northanger Abbey, it was published posthumously. Sorry if I got that word wrong. Um, and this is a story about Anne Elliot, who is 27. And uh, it's a very gentle look at... Um, I mean, apart from the, oh no, she's hit her head bit. It's a very gentle look at regret and about um, the heartache of missed opportunities. And I think that's, yeah, I think that sort of sums it up. Yeah, I think along with Northanger Abbey, this is one that I really want to reread quite soon because um, it's been 18 months since I read it. Um, but I remember, I do remember liking it. I I kind of wish it wasn't the first one that I read just because it does have another, it's, it has a separate tone from the other from the other ones. Um, like it's very kind of, well, I've said this before, but people say it's um, the most mature of her novels. It's just very sort of understated. Now that I've read all the other ones. I think this one's very understated and very kind of like... So yes, so basically Anne Elliot, um, she was madly in love with uh, Captain Wentworth uh, back in the day, but uh, she was persuaded to uh, call off the engagement because he didn't have very much money and stuff. And then he turns up again uh, ten years later when they're living in Bath and she's like, oh, but I actually love you, I'm sorry. Um, and he's like, yeah, I'm very, very eager to reread this one, um, and I'm sort of prioritising it, along with Northanger Abbey. Abbey Abbey. So at number two, sorry, number two is, it's uh, 
Mansfield Park Life. So I've talked about this a bunch of times, but I, w I really, I was really surprised by this novel and I really, really liked it. I really liked, so with all the Jane Austen novels, um, I've heard Steve Donahue talk about this a bit, and he says that each of the novels, um, you can imagine them kind of all the characters inhabiting the same universe, like sort of Marvel universe, um, but they, each of the novels have a different register. And I think that's a really, really good way of putting it, because each of the novels, they do, I mean, they follow sort of similar structures, kind of. Um, my mum said that it's like, and then everything's fine again. Um, and, you know, there's sort of similar sort of character types and things, but the style of each novel and the tone of each novel is just very, very slightly different. Um, and Mansfield Park is kind of a similar vein to Persuasion. It's quite sort of under... well, no, that's not true. It sort of... it takes its time and it's more... it's much more character-driven. We're much more concerned with Fanny Price's... the protagonist, Fanny Price. We're much more concerned with her kind of what she's thinking about certain stuff. Um, and because I didn't know anything about the plot or anything, I um, I just I was really, really invested in it. Um, I can see why... I think also the reason that I was surprised by it, because the novel that I read before this was Northanger Abbey, and so I was kind of bringing that energy into this book, thinking like, okay, it's a lesser-known Jane Austen novel, it's probably going to be like Northanger Abbey. But it isn't at all. I mean... She wrote it after Pride and Prejudice, and it's very, very kind of cleverly structured and everything. So yes, Fanny Price as a character, I was really rooting for her. I really... Aunt Norris. Aunt Norris. So she's another one of these um, really, really funny, obnoxious, snooty characters. Um, and at the beginning of the novel, she's sort of... it's quite funny, but she gets progressively nastier and nastier and nastier until I was just like, can someone just tell Aunt Norris to leave Fanny Price alone, please? So yes, it's about sticking to your guns. It's about sticking to your moral guns. Ow. Henry Crawford is a bit of a one. Um, also, with this book, um, I think, I'm pretty sure I got this right, but this is kind of the, I think this is the only book which looks at the lower classes in um, a lot of detail. So Fanny Price, her her actual family are um, in very kind of like, not, mm, are they in poverty stricken circumstances? Well, they're not, they're not wealthy. They're very, very poor. And I liked that kind of break away from the sort of the usual stately homes and mansions that you usually associate with Jane Austen novels. I liked that there was like a um, extended period where we were in this kind of environment. Um, and she goes, she goes back to her actual family's house and she envisions you know them all to sort of look up to her and be and for her to be sort of respected but she arrives and the children are in it's just chaos basically and I yeah I just really I really like that um the ending is a little bit unpalatable but I mean it's it's the early 19th century what can you do about it it's just one of those things huh? But yeah, it's at number two just because I was really surprised by it. I really enjoyed it, and um, I there's something about Fanny Price which I really, <laughs> I really relate to, and I, I um yeah, I would really recommend if you haven't read Mansfield Park, I'd really recommend it because it's my number two. So of course that means that number one is uh, is of course Pride and Prejudice, and I'm sorry to not be very controversial about this, but you know there you go. Uh, the reason it's at number one is uh, is for all the reasons that you might think. It's just really really good it's just really really good so um i was i was surprised by this novel just because it is full of plot and it kind of goes it really kind of wraps along a lot um her other novels tend to kind of like she takes her time a little bit more with her other novels but this one it just really kind of gets on with it and it's very impressive because there are a lot of characters there are a lot of minor characters lots of you know they're all very memorable. Um, there's lots of kind of um, hilarious bits, kind of like tense bits. Um, Elizabeth Bennet is of just really, really fabulous character. One of the things I was really also um, surprised by, you find out her character as you go along. There isn't like a 
um, a big sort of paragraph saying Elizabeth Bennet was a da -da 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 -da. there isn't any of that you just you you glean bits of her character as you go along which I really really liked I think there's a reason why she's kind of one of the most um, well liked of Jane Austen's protagonists because she just um, she is very witty she is flawed she's she's a bit of a snob herself herself um, and she has her own prejudices um, but she has some very very good um, turn down for what um, comebacks from Mr. Darcy. Had you behaved in a more gentlemanlike manner? Turn down for what? We're better. So, um, yeah, no, I, I think Brian Prejudice just for enjoyment levels. Um, it's it's kind of it is it was my favourite. So there we go. So just to recap, we had Northanger Abbey 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 number six. Maybe I'm in love by Emma Bunton. You know it makes sense and sensibility. Uh, Persuade Me Otherwise, Persuasion, Mansfield Park, and uh, Pride and Prejudice. Um, and that's my ranking. So there we go. I'm really glad that I've now read all of Jane Austen's novels. I, um, As I say, I'm, I'm going to really enjoy, I think, just if it's a rainy day, just picking a novel, you know, just picking up Persuasion or something and just reading um, a Jane Austen novel. I think they're really, really good for that, aren't they? Oh, oh my leg. So, um... Yes, if you have not read Jane Austen before, I would very, very much recommend that you do. Um, and uh, what is your... <laughs> if you have read Jane Austen before, then I'd be interested to hear what your favourite Jane Austen novels are, whether you agree or whether you disagree. Um, I'm sure most a lot of people will disagree. Um, as I say, my priorities for rereading are Northanger Abbey, just to see if I have missed anything, which I'm sure I have. And uh, I really, really want to read Persuasion again because this is the kind of the, the one that's... I mean, it's been 18 months since I read it and I really want to to, uh, to have a look at it again. So yes, I hope everyone is okay. I hope um, you all have a nice time. <laughs> and uh, yes, I shall see you anon. Bye-bye. Are the shades of Pemberley to be thus polluted? <laughs>